So welcome to Dalhousie Family Medicine. We are uh, 10 sites, but one learning community, which we will uh, convince you of through these upcoming slides. Uh, our sites have something for everyone. Uh, we are always comprehensive in family medicine and attempt to train our residents to feel comfortable practicing broad scope family medicine upon graduation. Uh, our sites you'll learn are a mix of urban and rural experiences. Uh, we also have longitudinal sites and as well as sites that are in the traditional block-based format. Uh, we have opportunities for enhanced skills uh, should you choose to do a three-year program after your two years uh, and also many teaching and leadership opportunities. So across the country, there are 17 schools that have family medicine programs and uh, all schools follow the same accreditation standards. All are, um, you know, very, very wonderful. And it's really sort of trying to find the, the right match for you and which school is the right one for you. So I'm going to try hard to convince you that Dalhousie Family Medicine is the right one for you. Uh, so this is uh, for anyone not from the Maritimes. This is just a little map showing how we're distributed across the three maritime provinces of New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PEI. Uh, you will notice there are some light gray areas that sort of show how that site is distributed across the geographic area. So for example, North Nova uh, is spread quite broadly across that part of Nova Scotia. Uh, so just a, a little note on some folks that uh, in our leadership group in family medicine. So Dr. Cass Stringer is our department head and was unable to join us this evening. Uh, and Dr. Jenny Lieberman, you met. And if you are from Dalhousie as an undergraduate learner, you may have met Dr. Jacqueline Hernandez-Lee, who is our undergraduate program director. And then each of our sites uh, and uh, branches of sites have program, or sorry, site directors and assistant site directors. So these are the folks that you see here on the screen uh, for both family medicine and the in integrated family medicine, emergency medicine program. And I'll introduce everyone at the end, just prior to the breakout rooms. So I am gonna pass it over to Dr. Jenny Lieberman. All right, thanks, Sasha. So yeah, I'm just go going to go through some of the kind of key points about the, the main program, and then I'll hand off to Dr. Atkinson to really um, tell you a little bit more in detail about our different sites as well. Um, so this slide essentially just gives you an idea of how many um, seats there are at each of our sites across the program. This is per year. Um, some changes this year, there, there is a new site um, uh, for a New Brunswick um, uh, resident studying abroad, uh, or um, graduate who is studying abroad, um, which is an IMG spot that's new in Fredericton this year. And we also have two new spots um, uh, in Miramichi, which are um, an integrated longitudinal integrated site, um, as well as two new spots um, as part of our St. John IFMEM program that are in the Sussex stream. Um, and finally, we have a new um, position, which is the Halifax Integrated Clinical Scholar Program, um, which is basically a three-year integrated program, um, which is a CMG position um, in the, at the Halifax site. Um, as you can see here, this is just kind of a breakdown of um, which sites offer uh, predominantly longitudinal versus block-based um, learning experience. As you can see in that third column, uh, there are multiple of our, our sites that have opportunities to do both kind of a block-based approach, but also with some integrated um, rotations that happen throughout uh, the core family medicine blocks. So we really pride ourselves on, on uh, the learning experience at Dell Family Medicine. There's lots of self-directed learning opportunities for, for residents. Um, you know, you are adult learners, you will continue to be adult learners, but it also is supported by a strong centralized curriculum. In terms of some program highlights, we are definitely highly learner focused and there's lots of one-on-one -on -one feedback in a competency-based assessment environment. Um, we do have, as mentioned, an adaptable core curriculum um, and that incorporates emerging topics in family medicine with resident input. So we have resident representation on our curriculum committee. Um, and although there are sort of core, there are core curriculum um, components, they are delivered independently at each site. Um, every year, all of our residents come together at an all-site resident education weekend in the fall. Um, and this year it's going to be a simulation-based education weekend um, based in Halifax. Um, as mentioned in the video, we do have a care acute care simulation curriculum at all of our sites. Um, as well, there's an opportunity for residents to um, uh, take a, a, a site-based quality improvement course and, and complete chart audit um, um, projects in their uh, 
first year of the residency. Um, as well, there are rural medicine uh, opportunities at all of our sites. We do provide funding for NRP, Alarm, ATLS, and an ALS, ACLS refresher. Um, if you choose not to take either the ATLS or Alarm, there is um, funding uh, that is av uh, available for alternative um, courses um, that would be sort of vetted by your site director. Um, all of our sites offer exam preparation um, sessions, uh, teaching skills, and practice management um, curriculum as well. You'll find that our hospitals are very much family medicine oriented. Um, there really is minimal competition for learning, learning opportunities, which is a, a great strength of our program at all our sites. We have a, com a committed, enthusiastic um, group of family medicine um, um, preceptors, as well as other specialty teachers as well, um, and definitely highly collegial working environments across all our sites. Um, there is, we, we, we definitely want to make sure that there's some continuity of care and continu continuity of learning um, throughout your residency. So this can look a different, uh, you know, a number of different, like a number of different ways. Um, so if you're at a longitudinal uh, integrated site, then that continuity is is built into sort of the design of, of how those those sites are run. Um, at sites that are block-based, they, they there is a half day back as well. So uh, all residents have a chance or will have the opportunity to, to maintain that continuity um, with their panel of patients throughout the two years. Years. Um, in terms of resident community, um, we have an associate chief resident at um, all of our sites, um, and these residents gather, you know, regularly to to meet and sort of update on on goings on at the, at the individual sites and share experiences and uh, and tips and tricks, uh, and bring those back to to um, their site directors in the program. Um, there, as mentioned earlier, is resident participation on all our program committees, um, and as well as in the CARMS process. Um, and there are educational and social events at all of the sites individually, and then again in the resident education weekend annually where all the residents come together. So lots of opportunities to build that resident community. Um, we pride ourselves on, you know, uh, helping residents to tailor their, their learning experience. So, you know, you can choose the site which best suits your personal learning style and objectives. Um, and that, that's one of the beauties of our program is that we have we have something for everybody. Um, certainly, as you, you know, match to your sites, you can, uh, there'll be an opportunity to match with preceptors who share special interests. Um, Every site has both selective and elective time, which will help you to kind of focus um, your learning on, on areas that uh, you may uh, have a special interest in or gaps that you may have identified in, in your training up to, up to that point. Um, and there are also in this in the PGY two year some um, sort of enhanced selective opportunities um, in terms of a global health option. There are longitudinal electives, there's research electives, and also uh, humanities electives. So lots of different opportunities um, to do um, again, sort of enhance your learning um, in, in many different areas. Um, we do offer a number of enhanced skills um, uh, programs uh, at Dell Family Medicine. Um, so these include emergency medicine, um, care of the elderly, um, palliative care, and also um, every year there are category two training opportunities. Um, these are our third year residency program directors. So Dr. Clory is the, is the enhanced skills director. Dr. Grant is our palliative care. Dr. Henneberry uh, is emergency medicine. And Dr. Valerie Lewis is our care of the elderly uh, program director. If you're interested in research, there's lots of opportunities again at our program. So we have a well-developed research network um, that promotes primary care research um, in the Maritimes. And I'll just sort of go through which sites um, have that. Um, and, and so in terms of, I guess, other activities that um, even if you're not wanting to do sort of um, research, there are certainly lots of other scholarly activities um, in which you, you can participate throughout the two years as well. Um, so evidence-based medicine seminar series. Um, oops, we'll just go back there. As mentioned, there's the quality improvement project in core um, in core family medicine in, in your uh, first year. Um, there's a resident-led journal club, as well as all residents will complete um, a resident project. And, and as mentioned, there are opportunities for electives in research, and um, there's a longitudinal medical education elective that, that is available in the second year of the program. Um, and I mentioned earlier when I, we had the sort of the site chart up in terms of the, the seats that there is the uh, clinical scholar integrated program. This is the, pa the Dr. Patrick Medor clinical scholar um, program, which is a, 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 a seat based in Halifax or a position based in Halifax. 
Um, some of the current research um, initiatives that are going on, um, there are many. Um, I guess we, we do have a, a team of dedicated researchers, both um, medical doctors as well as uh, other um, PhD uh, researchers, as well as research associates, um, <clears throat> predominantly in, at the Halifax, Fredericton, and St. John sites. So that's something to keep in mind um, as you're sort of choosing which site might might um, have the, those opportunities if, if um, you're interested in research. Um, in terms of some of the, the topics, um, health services, primary care, care renewal, um, EMRs, um, clinical family medicine, education, end of life care, and lots of other projects are, are on the go across our research community. So now I'm going to hand over to Dr. Atkinson and she's going to take you on a tour of the Maritimes. All right, put your seat belts on. Here we go. Um, I will declare myself biased. I love the Maritimes. I didn't grow up here, but I really love all of the three provinces. And I feel that uh, you couldn't go wrong in any of the programs that we're going to be uh, visiting here, any of the sites. So let's explore the Maritimes. We'll start with Nova Scotia. And so the province there that looks a little bit like a seven on its back and uh, with a, the bit that looks like a six up by Cape Breton Island, that is Nova Scotia. Um, so we'll start with Cape Breton, um, the Sydney program. So Cape Breton uh, Family Medicine Teaching Unit, it's, it was established a number of years ago in 1997. It is a major referral center for all of Cape Breton, and it's the second largest facility in the province and the sec second busiest in terms of acute uh, admissions. Um, there is a focus, even though Sydney is a is a city, there is a focus on rural experiences in areas such as Arishat, Badek, Shedekamp, Eskazoni, and Niels Harbour. Another site that, um, that is in Cape Breton is the Inverness site. And this site is a rural longitudinal, longitudinal integrated competency-based program centered in family medicine. The, uh, the learning is um, mostly takes place um, in clinical experiences centered in family medicine with preceptors who practice comprehensive family medicine. Uh, and they practice in a variety of settings, including their offices, hospital, long-term care, ER, house calls, and OR assists. Um, you also would have an opportunity to work with Indigenous populations and First Nations communities. Um, the faculty there is uh, is very experienced and skilled, um, and the resident training mostly takes place at the Inverness uh, Inverness Consolidated Memorial Hospital, uh, and then using Sydney when needed for some rotations. And the uh, third program that uh, the third site for um, uh, Cape Breton is the IFMEM, which stands for Integrated Family Medicine Emergency Medicine. Uh, this this site of this type of program it was new in July 2022. There's a similar program in St. John, which was the original one. Um, the Cape Breton site takes two CMG residents per year. Uh, it's one of the, it's a it's a a bit of a different kind of program. It's sort of an integrated um, program between family medicine and emergency medicine across all three years of the program. Um, there's lots of access for hands-on learning. Uh, they residents there really uh, rarely feel like an off-service um, resident. Uh, an opportunity to, to do some self-directed learning, and you can also tailor your learning through the three years. Um, you get training in POCUS, ATLS, PALS, CASTED, and AIM. Um, there is a collaborative relationship with the Halifax Plus One EM and the St. John three-year IFM EM program, so they all sort of collaborate together. So then we'll move on to Halifax. Um, uh, so the Dalhousie Department of Family Medicine uh, is the, the sort of main administrative hub for the department is in Halifax. Um, there's also the Dalhousie Medical School, the Nova Scotia campus. There's also a New Brunswick campus um, and faculty who practice, and then the faculty who practice comprehensive family medicine. Um, the curriculum 
uh, in in Halifax, there is a uh, initial block that uh, we call Foundations in Family Medicine, which gives you an opportunity to spend your first month in the city. And then um, sort of we do some teaching there where you where it makes sense to do it all at once for everybody kind of thing. So it's a good chance to kind of get familiar with with the site and what's going on. The placements are based in both uh, HRM and in New Brunswick. Uh, you have access to all subspecialty fields of medicine. And uh, there is a strong family medicine presence in obstetrics, emergency, hospitalist, sport medicine, long-term care, addiction, sexual health, and LGBTQ plus health. Um, the, there's the, there are both academic and community teaching practices. Uh, the QE2 Health Center is the main hospital. It's a tertiary center. And the IWK uh, Hospital for Women and Children is the, is the other main hospital. There, we now also have um, satellite sites in Liverpool um, area in the South Shore. Um, and which we'll speak of next. Um, so, so the, the PGY1s here would uh, join the Halifax-based residents for the, uh, the that initial block I was talking about earlier. Um, there's a real clinical variety in PGY2, um, the opportunity to get, to get exposure to uh, a variety of specialist, uh, specialties, including primary care obstetrics, procedural clinics, emergency medicine, hospital medicine, and elective options. Um, there is an emphasis on a multidisciplinary approach, uh, including primary care and um, a, a variety of other things, as you see there, obstetrics, hospitalists, ER, um, there's opportunities for obstetrical simulation, procedural training, and long-term care exposure. Um, the clinical learning is mainly in vibrant uh, smaller communities like Bridgewater, Lunenburg, and Liverpool. And so you get a real idea of what it's like to be in, um, in smaller town, Nova Scotia, rural areas, and the ocean is everywhere. Um, uh, and and depending on you know what you like to do, there's opportunities to to do recreational activities on your own or um, to to be outdoors, to enjoy food, um, hiking, all those kinds of things. Lovely part of the province. So this is the Halifax Integrated Clinical Scholar Program. Um, this is a thesis-based master's degree in health-related field, a, a, a thesis-based, sorry, a thesis-based master's degree in a health-related field is a prerequisite for this opportunity. Um, it's a three-year program where it's inter integrating clinical and scholarly work. It's located in Halifax. You would be working under the supervision of a Halifax research faculty member, uh, whose research would align with your particular um, area of interest. Through the three-year program, the resident would be developing skills to uh, pertaining to the various elements of research. Uh, they also would stay connected to the clinical environment by attending the home clinic one morning per week during each of the um, CSP's 13 blocks. Um, you would attend the clinic, uh, a case-based Royal College Clinician Investigator Program virtual seminar series uh, offered monthly during PGY1 through the Dalhousie Faculty of Medicine and attend um, the Family Medicine Residency Curriculum Series uh, sessions uh, during your PGY1 and PGY2 along with the, the other PGY1s and PGY2s. So Southwest Nova. So Southwest Nova is down at the very tip of the, the bottom of the seven. It's a fully integrated longitudinal training model. Uh, it's a great match for residents who, are, uh, who want to practice rural comprehensive family medicine. It's based out of Yarmouth uh, Regional Hospital. Uh, the town of Yarmouth is approximately 7,000 and the catchment area though is 58,000. Very tight knit medical community, uh, known for its collegiality and supportive staff. Uh, residents are often on a texting basis with the consultants. One-on-one um, -on -one teaching, 
for residents uh, and you don't have to compete for other specialties. A strong primary care, primary care obstetrics, prenatal care and hospitalist exposures, a very cohesive group of residents. Uh, there are no mandatory away rotations, so you could potentially spend your entire residency uh, in that area. Uh, tons of opportunities to do um, outdoor and water um, based uh, recreational activities. Um, uh, and a wide range of other community organized sports, hockey, soccer, basketball, baseball, et cetera. Then we move on to the Annapolis Valley, another lovely area, as all of these are. Um, so the majority of clinical, a, a majority of learning and clinical experiences is, is with your family medicine preceptor. And they practice comprehensive family medicine in a variety of settings. Um, uh, ho office, hospital, long-term care, ER, house calls. It's a rural, longitudinal, competency-based program, and it uh, has experiences in communities throughout the Annapolis Valley. So it's one of the areas that has a, a gray, the light gray zone, um, as does uh, Yarmouth. Um, there are four seasons of lots of outdoor things. If you like doing outdoor things, hiking, biking, golf, beaches, and uh, snowshoeing. Uh, it's also Nova Scotia's heartland, uh, agricultural heartland, um, and the center of its award-winning wine interest industry. So there is, if you like farm-to-table kind of eating um, and and having a glass of wine, uh, it's it's really a, a nicely based for that. Um, so now North Nova. North Nova is another um, longitudinal integrated uh, site that's uh, that's spread over that area of the province. Uh, eight residents this year, based in comprehensive family practice. Um, the there are four regional hospitals and several smaller care centers uh, with lots of different opportunities across all of North Nova. Uh, the uh, faculty are very experienced. They're very enthusiastic and and uh, are. Um, thrilled to have a residency program there. Uh, the fact there's one to one uh, or two to one teaching ratio typically. Centrally located in the hub of Nova Scotia, there's a, again beautiful hiking parks, mountains, beaches, golf, sports, etc. Um, the communities are very welcoming and the people are friendly. They really want you to train in North Nova. They hope you will stay with them. Um, so they they will uh, they will be lovely. You will you will be treated very well. Uh, it's a relatively new site uh, since July 2019 and has taken off running. Um, one of the communities would be your home base, and you get the majority of your training in that community, hospital, and clinics, but then you travel to other parts of North Nova for curriculum days, extra training, and, and other added benefits. Now we'll move on to beautiful New Brunswick. So you can see New Brunswick is sort of in the upper left corner. It's the It looks less like a number and more like it's a blob, but it's a beautiful blob. The Miramichi. So near, Miramichi is uh, is a new site, and uh, they're uh, very excited to be um, to be hosting residents and teaching residents. Uh, it's a longitudinal integrated site, also. Uh, it's perfect for residents who really want a strong community family medicine experience. They'll be taking two residents per year. Uh, a group of enthusiastic teachers and with one-to-one -one teaching ratio. It's based out of the Miramichi Regional Hospital, which is 146 bed hospitals, and the community is uh, 17,000 people. Uh, there are opportunities there in Indigenous health, care of the elderly, addictions, and mental, mental health, and uh, GP oncology. Uh, very robust internal medicine clinics and procedures, and a very uh, a busy uh, emergency department with hands-on experience. Again, a wide range of outdoor activities, including hiking, biking, cross-country skiing, kayaking, and golf. Now we'll move next to Moncton. This is a rotation-based site or a block-based site. It uh, Moncton is New Brunswick's largest and fastest-growing city. Uh, and it's becoming increasingly diverse. Um, the Moncton Hospital is a 400 bed tertiary center with family medicine care and teaching at its core. It's very much a family medicine, um, uh, strongly 
pre big presence of family medicine there. You will get experiences in dermatology, marginalized population, simulation, and quality improvement. Uh, there is an incoming $1 million investment uh, into Moncton for a simulation. And uh, their, they, um, their claim to fame is 85% of grads end up from their program end up staying in the Maritimes. So then we'll move on to St. John, New Brunswick. So St. John is the home of the Dalhousie Medical School New Brunswick campus. So there, that means that uh, there are uh, more density, like you, you, you will find learners, um, like undergrad learners, for instance, in almost every site, if not every site um, at times, but certainly um, the two places that have a medical school, you have a greater opportunity because there's more density of students. So if you're really interested in teaching, that might be something to consider. And also there's there are research opportunities. Um, St. John Regional Hospital is a tertiary level care facility. Uh, uh, there is a full complement of services, but residents uh, still have a, closing, a close working relationship with staff and physicians. They have a high tech simulation lab. Uh, a strong family medicine obstetrics program. And if you like all kinds of water, St. John is both on the ocean and on the St. John River system, which is quite a large river. People take big boats on it. And here we come to the St. John IFM EM program. Uh, so this was the, the initial program of this type um, uh, in our in at Dalhousie, it's a rotation based site with integrated longitudinal components. Uh, it's integrating both a uh, training in both uh, family medicine and emergency medicine across all three years of the program. It's a small size, uh, and so there's a real focus on uh, residents' individual needs and achievements, um, and also a strong uh, focus on research and, uh, and award winning faculty. Um, there are opportunities for advanced skills in POCUS and ATLS, PALS, Casted, AIM, and more. And then we come to Fredericton. Fredericton is the capital city of New Brunswick. Uh, it's a block-based site, uh, preceptor-based with evidence um, on resident learning, not service. The family medicine residents are frequently the only learner in a on a specialty rotation. They have a state of art, uh, state of the art simulation lab, um, and a and a robust sim simulation curriculum. Uh, it's a great city year round with activities for each season, extensive multi use trail system, it, you know, great uh, cross country skiing. Uh, they get snow that stays, which some part of the more coastal places in the Maritimes that's not always the case. Um, it's a it has a vibrant arts and culture scene. Uh, the Harvest Jazz and Blues Festival is a well known uh, major music festival that happens there, and year round outdoor markets. Burr. Um, Prince Edward Island. So the smallest province in Canada, and you can see it up there sort of cradled between New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. So it's a it's a block based with the and again, you could complete all of your rotations in Prince Edward Island um, if you if you wanted to. It's small size uh, sort of facilitates close collaboration with faculty. Um, it takes uh, most a lot of the teaching takes place in. Um, oh, my God. I'm forgetting the name Charlottetown and. Summerside. 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 I was going to say Summertown, and I was like, "That is so not right." Uh, Summerside, and they 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 look like they might be far apart, but they're not, um, because it's a it's a small uh, a, a small province. Uh, the, there are wild island wide community based care opportunities, um, and often there's only one learner uh, on rotation, uh, and there is the opportunity for teaching medical students. A variety of outdoor activities, including 800 kilometers of beaches, can you beat that? And 700 kilometers uh, of a, a trail system. Many festivals, events that celebrate theater, food, music, island culture every year or all year round. And then now I think I am turning it over. Yes, thank you, Dr. Atkinson, for that 
tour of the Maritimes. Um, so just a little, a few slides, we're almost done with the presentation, but just wanted to give you some comparisons amongst our teaching sites. Uh, if you're interested in teaching medical students, uh, undergraduate learners, med ones, twos, clerks, uh, we do have some of those opportunities um, in Halifax and St. John, with both have medical schools affiliated with them. And then Miramichi, Moncton, Fredericton, and the Sydney site in Cape Breton have longitudinal integrated clerkships. So there's um, more junior learners that are around as well. Um, number of our communities have Indigenous health clinical opportunities um, in New Brunswick, the St. John FMEM program, as well as uh, our new Miramichi site. And in North Nova, or Nova Scotia, we have North Nova, um, both Sydney and Inverness uh, for Cape Breton, as well as Halifax. Um, however, all of our sites do have uh, Indigenous health curriculum. And it's also something we've often integrated into our Family Medicine Resident Education Weekend. Uh, if you're interested in delivering babies or being part of primary care obstetrics, and I highly recommend it, it's lots of fun. Um, some of our sites have, a, all of our sites do offer training in obstetrics, but some of our sites have a, a little bit more volume than others. Um, so Cape Breton, Sydney, um, both Halifax and the South Shore Bridgewater area, Moncton, St. John, Southwest Nova, and the Amerson and Gadish sites of North Nova, um, as well as have strong, strong primary care obstetrics. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, there's, you know, we have urban sites and more rural sites. So our more rural sites would be Annapolis Valley, Inverness, Miramichi, North Nova, Prince Edward Island, uh, the South Shore uh, arm of the Halifax site, as well as Southwest Nova. And just a, a little, I'm not going to go through the slide, but if you wanted to go back and look at it uh, after, you certainly can. Just sort of a bit of comparison of our sites in terms of uh, population and distance from the airport. So just so people always ask about what are some you know changes in the program or things that we're, we're proud of or things that we're working towards. So, so here's just a, a little list of some of the many things we're always constantly striving to improve, uh, often based on feedback that we receive from residents. Um, so this year, uh, in addition to last year, we have an intentional um, equity, diversity, inclusion uh, procedures and policies that are a part of our selection process that are built into that. Uh, we are constantly working to standardize our simulation curriculum uh, across all of our sites. And this year, at or sorry, next year, next September at our Family Medicine Education Weekend, we will have a simulation focused weekend. Um, we are reviewing and standardizing the procedural skills teaching part of our curriculum. Uh, we are continuing to offer quality improvement and patient safety curriculum and are, um, as part of quality improvement, continuously improving that curriculum as we go. Uh, we have a continued focus on resident wellness. And then some highlights, we have our new site, uh, Mirror Machine, New Brunswick. Uh, we have the new New Brunswickers studying abroad position uh, for an IMG based out of Fredericton and the new integrated three-year clinician scholar program. Um, I don't know why I said phone there, that must be a, an autocorrect. Um, as well, we've been sort of expanding across the Maritimes. So many of our sites uh, are, are expanding. As mentioned, our FMEM program uh, in St. John is expanding by two sites and branching out into the Sussex uh, area. Um, PEI is expanding um, by two positions as well, going up to seven. Uh, St. John is expanding, and I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some as well, but we're a, a constantly growing program uh, to meet the, the needs for family medicine in our communities. Um, so with CARMS, um, if you're going through the CARMS process and you decide that you want to add a site, you can do so at any time up until February 12th at 12 p.m. Uh, Atlantic Standard Time. It does not cost you any extra to add a site, and that's been new in the last couple of years, which is really nice. So if you initially um, you know, put down Halifax and Moncton as your sites of choice, and then you decided to add, you know, PEI, Southwest Nova, Annapolis Valley, um, Miramichi, you, you can do that at any point in time up until February 12th of 2024. It is only one interview and review process for each um, for Dalhousie Family Medicine as a whole, so you don't need to do an extra interview for each of the sites. It's just the one single interview. 
Um, just a few places to check us out. If you're looking for more information, you can find us on our Dalhousie Family Medicine website, uh, as well as our microsites that highlight a little bit more information from each of our communities. And we have an Instagram account, which is really nice to check out. Residents will often post pictures of uh, what it's like to be a resident in their communities. And, and sometimes the pictures are quite, uh, quite stunning. So take a look at that uh, if you haven't already. Um, we will be having an additional CARMS information session on Saturday, January 13th, 2024. So if you want to come back and visit us again, uh, that one will take place at 12 um, Atlantic Standard Time. And uh, you can look, register for that on our events page. Uh, the breakout room for that particular session will be resident run only. So if you want to, um, to have the opportunity just to speak with residents with no site directors or faculty around, um, that will be there'll be an opportunity at that time. <laughs>